We are just sitting here in an outfitter's cabin on Wolf Lake on the South Seal River system. Got to camp at 11.30 last night after almost a 13 hour day of uh, paddling and sailing Big Sand Lake in a catamaran. Did a huge open water crossing and massive rollers and uh, pushed on after we sawed the catamaran apart when the winds died, pulled the sail down and uh, banged off another 8k. There's just simply nowhere to camp and as it was almost pitch black and we were getting concerned, I rounded a corner and saw these cabins and it's just like, oh, just a sight for sore eyes in, uh, in the true sense of the term uh, which is awesome pretty buggy in here but I ran the thermosel inside the cabin last night and the bugs just didn't bother us at all probably uh, exhaustion helped us sleep through any buzzing in our ears too so just absolutely epic day me and Ted were just talking about how like what, what's, what's a normal day in the average Canadians or average people's lives look like, you know, even our own lives, in comparison to yesterday? Just drastically different. Sailing across a massive lake in the middle of the wilderness. Haven't seen, haven't seen a soul out here at all. Just a whole place to ourselves. Uh, amazing, you know, what an adventure. Um, and uh, yeah, we probably slept for about five hours last night. Seems to be about the, the average sleep we've been getting out here. And uh, yeah, just just had some coffee. Um, just uh, had my, my oatmeal, put my lunch aside. And uh, now we're packing up and getting out of here. We're gonna um, leave this cabin exactly the way we found it. Give it a good sweep. Um, there were some, uh, some bed sheets in here. Uh, we didn't use any of those. I slept on my ground pad on the mattress just to make sure that we were respectful of the owners. Um, there was uh, a plywood board hammered across the door uh, to keep bears out. You can see bear claw scratches on the door. Um, the next cabin over is probably the cooking cabin where they put boards with nails in it all over the place. Uh, to keep the bears out of there. We got another 31k to make it. Hopefully we get into a bunch of current. We have a big long rapid coming up and uh, we're worried that that might be a portage with these absolutely ridiculously high water um, situation that we have going on here. So. We won't know until we get there, but if we do have to portage, it's going to significantly cut into our time. Hopefully there will be some semblance of a trail if uh, it's a tough rapid because um, usually on the harder ones, you know, people portage them. Um, so we'll see. Of course, if it was lower water, it would just be a fun, runnable rapid, no problems. But uh, that's just, you get what you get when you come out here, and that's just what we're facing right now. I'm just going to switch my maps over now and then um, pack up and get going. Trying to make that, that daily distance on the lakes will pay off and it will, we'll be finishing a couple hours earlier on the river where we have current uh, depending on how long the rapids take to negotiate. this back where I found it. It'd be very annoying for the owners to get here and not have it.
Taking off the final pieces of wood here that were for the catamaran. Trying to save as much cordage as possible. There is a knot like way down the rope. I'm untying it though for sure. Those are the pieces you need to make a catamaran, except of course, you know, double the length. Caribou antler. Caribou is the only species of the deer family where both the male and female grow antlers. That's a male. Yeah, this looks like a male, small male. Usually they, uh, Males actually shed their antlers first before the females, so the, the males shed them uh, before Christmas. So I suppose Santa's reindeer, which of course are very closely related to caribou, would have to be females. Although they're magic, so you know they can do whatever they want, obviously. Doi. Um, yeah, so I think the caribou mostly are only in this area in the winter time their migration comes through here and right now they're up on the tundra there's a chance we might see one though but uh they're probably further north than us and in the winter they come through here again bald eagle footprints cool yeah but like good luck keeping up with it right On the water. A lot of bungling this morning. Ted and I have come up with a word for bungling is like when you need to like, you know, change your lure, but all your lures are crammed in a pile and they're all hooked together and you're like falling behind and the wind's blowing you back in the wrong direction and the other guy's ahead. And then like you finally get a lure out, but the rest dump out on the floor and then you cast out and immediately you get snagged and then your GoPro batteries die and you need to like find more GoPro batteries and then the one that you put in is dead and you didn't know and then like you have to format a card and you format a card that you like you know actually you just rode over it that would be like a category five bungle right there I think this morning we're at like about a category three bungle Ted feels like he's more category 3.54 bungle this morning but uh, yeah, a lot of bungling. Um, it's really good to have uh, your systems down pat. Like I have this Yeti bag that's got like a semi, it's waterproof, it, you, it's not submersible, but it's got a flap and a magnet opening that you can just grab stuff quickly. Whereas if all the stuff you need is like buried at the bottom of your bag, you gotta pull it out every time and bungle around with it and something important blows in the lake and you know what I mean? It just all adds up so quickly. <clears throat> Especially with all the filming and charging, we have to do solar charging and everything out here. <sighs> Woo! That's a lot of work. A lot of annoying little finicky things that we've coined as bungling. 
especially when they cut into a lot of the time and the systems aren't fast enough. One of the things that's really slow is this day bag because it's like a waterproof stuff sack and like when you need something from the bottom and you have to pull everything out, put everything back in properly so it rolls up waterproof and it takes forever. Anyways, really cool. Got a chance to uh, stay at these cabins. It was like a godsend basically after a very challenging day yesterday. Um, coming up in the short term, we have like a like two kilometer long rapid that we might have to portage to. It might be raging considering how high the water is. So we'll see what it's like when we get there. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, hopefully we can run it because that would save a lot of time. But fortunately, we should be getting to some more current today. We needed a rest. It was a lot of work coming across the big sand and over the height of land. And um, so the cabin taking a little extra time. I woke up with like a migraine. And so that's thankfully, thankfully subsided because we don't really have time, any time for that. You're bleeding, man. I ain't got time to bleed. So we're on the water now. It feels good. trying to get my rod out. That was like a minor bungle, like less than category one. Anything that sucks into time should be an easy job that winds up being hard is, uh, is a bungle. Crossing Wolf Lake, Ted and I caught more small pike than we could count. We were just catching one after the other, but nothing of any decent size. Pike like that, you're trolling. Soon, we found ourselves in the current of the South Seal River. Well, we're just exiting Wolf Lake. Uh, Wolf Lake was good to us. Current. With the high water levels, the current was strong. Oh, what a day. Not long after that, we made our way up to the two kilometer long rapid that we were concerned about. Pulling over into the flooded forest, we prepared for the run. Totally flooded out. Like the hard ground doesn't start to way back there. Pushy, pushy current uh, coming right up to this rapid, which can be dangerous because that could sweep you into a potentially unrunnable rapid. So I'm just going to strap some stuff down here and then uh, start giving her. The rapid that we were worried about summed up to be just a two kilometer stretch of really strong and heavy current with a couple parts that were maybe a class two. We managed to cheat the big stuff down the right by following an eddy line, relieved that we didn't have to portage. Basically, it was a piece of cake. Pretty soon, we are traveling with strong current and it was windy, but we were frustrated that we couldn't catch a keeper. And that there seemed to be no place anywhere to camp. I see some sandy bluffs, Ted. I don't know if that means a campsite though. Let's just pull the canoes off at the low part over there. There's just ripping fast current here, dude. We have to camp up there. With little other choice, we pulled over at the base of a high bank. We would need to haul all of our gear up on top of the esker to find flat, dry ground. 
just want to get into my whiskey. We have to hike up a cliff to get to a camp because there's just absolutely no camping on the river because of this high water. This is the best thing we've seen in the last 30 kilometers. Forgot how hard portage was. It's exhausting. uneventful day today which is kind of a good thing I guess probably not the most riveting stuff video wise but no nothing terrifying or death defying how was that guys well one thing this site has is an amazing view, which is pretty cool because uh, everything's been pretty flat, so we haven't had that yet. It feels pretty freeing to be up and above, looking at the river and the landscape. It's really beautiful. And uh, the spot up here is great. So hike from the canoe is really tough to take out all our stuff, but uh, overall just beautiful. Dry suit. Yeah, I wasn't wearing. Yeah, the ones the Gore-Tex booties attached to my yeah, dry you said suit. Yeah, neoprene. I was, oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't wearing uh, socks inside those. Oh man, that's feeling good. That wind though. Hot, eh? You have a blacked out from heat stroke. <laughs> a few black flies here. Not mosquitoes this time. Black flies, and they're they're worse, I think. They, they leave you looking like you were shot with like a machine gun, BB gun or something. This stuff works well. 30% deep muskaw. Shot? Nah. Cheers to the best miles for time day yet. Cheers, Ted. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, it's actually amazing, this river, the South Seal. It is huge. I know it's like, you know, borderline in flood. I don't know what you want to call it, but uh, regardless, it's a huge river. And this is only one branch of the Seal. So it's going to be meeting up with the North Seal. And then we're going to be in the Seal and uh you know tons of other tributaries and rivers meeting up with it so this is going to be quite the river like huge huge river and the water levels are absurdly high so you know if you got any horses bring them because you could water so many horses like here. if rivers were were penises this river would be an elephant's penis And can go right there. I'd say it'd be a, like a minky whale stick. They have weird dicks. You got the saw? Uh, yeah. Trip feels like I'm a victim in the movie saw. <laughs> anyway, um, we're gonna get to making food, making a fire, all that fun stuff. So nice here though. Big Joe Muffera, biggest man we ever saw, paddle in the Ottawa. No. Big Joe Muffera, paddle in the Mattawa, all the way from Ottawa, and just one day, yep, the old folks say. Well, they say there, there, Joe drank a bucket of gin and beat the living tar out of 29 men. Muffera, Joe.
Heave hi, heave hi ho, the best man in Ottawa was Mufferajo, Mufferajo. Ah! Today's garbage. Excellent. Kindling. Kilometers a day. until we let rigs it all stick and What are you using there? What? Muscle? Yep. Right. Muscling up. I'm getting attacked. You know what real men do when they put a muscle in the face? What do they do? They don't close their eyes. <laughs> in order to strain the pasta, put the lid upside down. Give it a little tap. Pinch them together. With your leather, man. Strain away. Hydrated yet, though? Hydrated, you mean? Is it? Yeah. yeah. Dinner today is pasta. And meat sauce. Bison. Pasta sauce. Really hearty. Go up, just rinse off these dishes. Tomorrow, try to make distance, run some rapids. Hopefully, we get fish tomorrow for dinner, but more importantly, be safe. Be safe with this really pushy river, be safe with the rapids. the morning of day eight and uh, there appears to be a heavy thunderstorm rolling in maybe we'll wait it out for a little here and just use it as an excuse to lay around as well there's more mosquitoes in here than there is outside Good morning, my neighbors. Let's kill these as many as we can. Mmm. This is the uh, kind of rain we also don't really want. The kind of rain that seems like it's just going to rain all day. 
uh, for our own comforts and also uh, for water levels, like the river's already in flood. Looks like maybe the weather is passing. There's wind and there's some really scary looking clouds. We had lightning, we had mm. thunder. Um, so as opposed to jumping out of the tent and, and packing up like we normally do, we actually brought coffee and food and boiled it almost like uh, you, some people do when they're winter camping and made the uh, coffee and, and uh, right outside the tent and drank it in the tent and carefully ate in the tent without spilling anything because you don't want to eat, you don't want too much food smell in the tent for, you know, obvious reasons, including bears. Um, anyways, so we uh, have a, just a massive hatch of black flies now. Dude. Yeah, like they're the black flies dude, have hatched. Look, look at the black. Oh my flies. god, look over here. Yeah, dude, they're all crawling up the walls yeah, in here. Yeah. So like the black flies are out, something fierce, and your firearms are useless against them as well. I was just blasting, you know, the shotgun around in the air, and it just did absolutely nothing. Um, so that was upsetting. But yeah, so basically today um, we're trying to make it to a place called Loon Lake or even if we're lucky Chipwayan Lake, which is a bit further than that. Um, we got some rapids coming up today. And one of them is a short rapid in a narrow pinch canyon that by looking at the, uh, the contour lines on the map has pretty steep walls, which means it won't be flooded over and potentially more channels and more ways to go down. It's all that water's gonna be rushing. There could be huge holes, huge standing waves. We're not really sure, but the scary part about it because the river's in flood is the river's so pushy. So it just pushes you into that uh, uh, slot canyon and there's no eddies and there's nowhere to get out because even if you get into the shore, there is no shore. You're just crashing into bushes and you have to get through water flowing through trees and everything before you even get to terra firma and so deep along yeah and it's so freaking deep so it's super super pushy so we might uh, to play it safe i mean we don't really know till we get there it might be kind of more flooded out it might be just a big fun couple standing waves and a, a, a awesome fun and intense rapid to run uh, or it might be um, unrunnable. So we're gonna try to play it safe and maybe get out of river, out of the river much higher up if we can and bushwhack down to it to see uh, what's going on there if the river's super pushy and there's no eddies. But that's one of the reasons why flood conditions or super high water can be dangerous is because there's nowhere to get over before the rapids to scout or portage or start a portage from. So. Anyways, yeah, so we've already done breakfast, so we're kind of ahead of the game, even though we uh, the weather kind of kept us pinned down a bit this morning. And uh, we're just taking down the tent, or Ted's just taking down the tent as I'm blabbing. And uh, we're gonna, you know, pack up and basically portage our stuff down this big bluff um, into the canoes, which we pulled up and, and load them and jump right into ripping current uh, to start the day. So, sunny times. Oh, a little breeze clears the bugs out of Smith. Yeah. <laughs> 